Okay, today we are here to discuss Davidoff Cigars. My name is Brian Dessen, I'm the founder of Pravada Cigar Club, and I wanna tell you everything that you need to know about Davidoff. So the history of Davidoff cigars begins in Geneva, Switzerland, where a Russian-born immigrant, originally named Zussel, changes his name to Zeno and begins to work for his father's tobacco shop in Geneva. Now, at this time, the tobacco shop sells very blue-collar products. They're regular, everyday, inexpensive cigars. And as Zeno starts to get older, he starts to generate a flair for dressing really well. He's known for how impeccably he dresses and he wants to elevate cigars to a different level. It's also worth noting that in his early 20s, Zeno traveled to Cuba and spent several years there learning and mastering the tobacco trade, where he not only earned the respect and admiration of many people in the Cuban cigar industry, but also made relationships that would benefit him for years to come in his career. And so in the 1940s, Zeno decides to apply for his tobacco manufacturing license and start making his own cigars right there in Geneva, Switzerland. The series of cigars he puts out are called the Chateau series and they're named after the Bordeaux wine estates. What really speaks to Zeno's character and method of doing business is that the names of the estates that he used uh, he acquired the rights to on a handshake basis with the owners of those estates. Picked up the phone, asked permission, and simply went ahead without any lawyers or contracts. So for the next 20 years, Zeno Davidoff begins marketing these ultra-premium cigars to a whole different caliber of people. Zeno becomes known as the king of cigars in Europe and is approached in 1967 by Cuba Tobacco, which is the Cuban monopoly on tobacco at this time. They not only approach him to make a cigar in Cuba, but they approach him to make a cigar at the Laguito factory, which up until this point has only rolled cigars for Fidel Castro's private stash of cigars. It's also worth mentioning that during World War II, when the German occupation of France was almost imminent, uh, a group of French tobacconists called Zeno Davidoff and trusted him on a handshake to care for nearly two million Havana cigars during the remainder of the war so they wouldn't fall into German hands. Another fun fact is that all three cigars that Davidoff originally made in Cuba, the Davidoff number no. one, the Davidoff number no. two, and the Davidoff ambassadrice, all bore the Davidoff last name on the band and none of them were over a 38 ring gauge. I find this fascinating, especially in a day where people are smoking 60 ring gauge cigars. Not one of these original Cuban connoisseur sizes were over a 38 ring gauge. So Davidoff as a brand becomes so wildly popular that in less than two years, Zeno is approached by Odinger AG, a large Geneva-based family corporation to buy the trademark to the name Davidoff. Although Zeno still runs the show, he gets a hefty payout for the name. For over 20 years, the relationship between Cuba and Davidoff remains strong, and Davidoff cigars reign king. However, Zeno becomes frustrated as production issues from Cuba tobacco become more and more rampant until finally, in a state of fury in 1988, Zeno Davidoff orders the burning of over 131,000 Davidoff Cuban cigars in a massive bonfire, citing that these Cuban cigars are no longer worthy to wear the Davidoff band. So Zeno starts to look around, but before I tell you where he goes, I think it's important to note that this may have been a bit of a business move as well. The United States buys three times as many cigars per year as does Europe. So I have to believe that there was something to that. With the embargo, they couldn't sell in the Americas and they wanted to potentially be able to sell here, so they move factories. 
So Zeno ends up in the Dominican Republic. Now, up until now, the Dominican Republic made cigars, but they weren't top tier cigars, ultra premium. He ends up meeting with a family called the Kellners. There's Hendrik Kellner Sr., the owner of Tabadom Cigars. And then there's also Joe Pito and a few other members. They're all growers. They're tobacco growers for generations. They're originally Dutch. They came to the Dominican Republic generations ago, and they're growing tobacco there. Zeno loves the tobacco. In fact, he believes the tobacco is better than the tobacco growing in Cuba. So this is where the Davidoff cigars you all know and love is really formed, right? They're out of Cuba. They're in the Dominican Republic. It's 1991. They're with the Kellner family who are going to run this whole show for them. And Zeno is in love with the tobacco. So let's talk about the cigars in the lineup. These are the standard Davidoff cigars. The first cigar I'll introduce to you is the Davidoff Grand Cru. There's also the Signature Series and a bunch of other series that were made with this basic prototype, which is a Connecticut shade wrapper originally grown in Connecticut and Dominican binder and fillers. Davidoff in Dominican Republic is able to offer a flavor that has never been found before. Some people call it a mustiness. I think Charlie Monado from Half Wheel refers to it as mushroomy. Uh, it is definitely a dank flavor, and while it doesn't sound like it would be that appealing, it certainly is unique and interesting and something that you grow accustomed to by smoking traditional Davidoff cigars. And so this is the basis of Davidoff's success, that big white band, the uh, double band on most cigars, and a beautiful Connecticut shade uh, wrapped right underneath it. So I'm here with one of my favorite Davidoff cigars, which is the Davidoff Colorado Claro. And I think over time, cigar smokers start looking for, in the early and mid-2000s, a little bit more of a bolder experience. In fact, Nicaragua is creeping up on the Dominican Republic. People are saying that the tobaccos in Nicaragua are as good as Cuba and better than the Dominican Republic in some ways. And so I think there's a little bit of pressure there, and they start to look at other things to wrap the cigars in to make for a little bit of a bolder experience. And there you have the Colorado Claro. One cigar worth noting, which is probably my favorite Davidoff cigar of all time, is the Puro de Oro. This is a cigar that is adorned in two gold, uh, a gold footband and a gold Davidoff band. Uh, there's a million different stories on how this tobacco was created, and it comes with a predecessor, which we'll get into in a minute, but the cigar had a lot of issues. Number one, it wasn't in cellophane, and it turned out there were a lot of damages, returns, and issues like that. So the line was quickly cut off. It's still a collector's item to this day and boxes are selling for two and three times the original MSRP. And finally, in 2013, Davidoff succumbs to the pressure of Nicaragua and creates the Davidoff Nicaragua. Now, ironically, this Nicaraguan cigar is not as full body as the typical cigars coming out of Nicaragua at that time, which I thought was peculiar, but it is what it is. There's still a large following of people out there that absolutely love the Davidoff Nicaragua, and it signals a change. Notice the black band. That is different. It really signals a change in the company's history. And I'm not sure that the people managing the production of cigars in the Dominican Republic really loved this program. Another cigar in my hand sporting the black band is the Davidoff Yamasa. Now this is the predecessor to the Puro de Oro. It's just like the Puro de Oro, except it's slightly different because it has some Nicaraguan tobacco in it. And if you notice, it also sports a black band. That means it's part of what they call the Discovery Series. For me, the black band typically just means that it's not the traditional Dominican Davidoff cigar with the Connecticut shade wrapper. This one, again, has some Nicaraguan tobacco in it, and I think it's also important to note that this Yamasa wrapper is grown in the Dominican Republic, and not a lot of wrapper leaf is grown in the Dominican Republic. It has an amazing story, and it is amazing tobacco. Shortly after that, we have another cigar in the Discovery series. It sports a Brazilian Matafino wrapper. This is the Escudio, and it is a fantastic cigar. We've actually had it in Provada Cigar Club. Tremendous cigar. I'm starting to really appreciate uh, where Davidoff is going at this point. They're mixing and matching and playing around and really trying to keep up with this ever-growing market that's looking for more and more exotic tobaccos. And then finally, we come to the Davidoff Winston Churchill. 
Now, I think it's important to mention something that hasn't been mentioned previously in this video, is that the gentleman that's blending all of these cigars, so the Kellners, they're growing all of the tobacco for these cigars, but there is an absolute genius in the kitchen of Davidoff that is master blending all of these cigars. He's known for being the master blender of all master blenders in the Dominican Republic, and his name is Eladio Diaz. Now, Eladio Diaz is so meticulous, some of his blends would take years to make, okay? And so, one of the reasons why this is so cool to mention is this is the Davidoff Winston Churchill. Eladio Diaz was in a coma for a brief period of time. When he awoke from the coma, he had the blend to this cigar. It's the only blend that he's ever just came to him the first time, no revisions, no nothing. This is the Davidoff Winston Churchill, and it's one of Eladio's finest works. And that brings us to the Davidoff Limited Editions. Now, Davidoff is probably most known for their limited editions, and the most popular limited edition out of those is the year of. So this goes with the Chinese calendar. It's the year of the dog, the year of the tiger, whatever that year of. Very sought after cigar and probably their best seller. Davidoff becomes known for these limited editions because it really plays out well with the collector crowd. I mean, we're talking about cigars that cost 30 and $40 uh, and, and higher, and you have to buy them in master boxes and you know those, so we're talking about $500,000 purchases. It really plays well into that collector model. In fact, Davidoff is one of the only non-Cuban brands to ever be counterfeited. So this collector's this uh, artisan craft, this really high-end, ultra-premium, hard-to-get thing, it really drives home with the Davidoff brand and it makes them very sought after. So where is Davidoff now? Well, I think it's important that we talked about the fact that the Kellners basically made Davidoff what it is today. The Kellners and of course, Eladio Diaz. So the growers and the master blender. They've been managing this process in the Dominican Republic and making these amazing cigars that build this brand. So in 2017, some big changes start to happen in the corporate side, which for the corporate side of Davidoff, you have two different locations. You have Geneva, Switzerland, and you have Tampa, Florida. Okay, so in Geneva, Switzerland, a new CEO named Beat Hauenstein is uh, appointed. Okay, so that's very important. And around this same time in Tampa, you have a person that was a part of Camacho Cigars that Davidoff previously bought a few years prior. He was the graphic designer for Camacho Cigars. Makes it through this merger. His name is Dylan Austin. And in 2017, this new CEO appoints him to be the VP of Sales for Davidoff of the Americas. Very quickly, by 2019, Dylan is now the president of Davidoff of the Americas. So these important things are taking place behind the scenes. And at the same time, as we find out now in 2021-22, that the Kellners are no longer with Davidoff right around that same time. And shortly after that, Eladio Diaz leaves Davidoff as well. So we no longer have the same grower and the same management. We no longer have the same master blender. And I have to admit, it's showing in some of the cigars. Some of the cigars I've had from Davidoff recently just didn't have that Davidoff thing. So what does the future look like for Davidoff cigars now? I guess time will tell. My name is Brian Destin for Pravada Cigar Club, and if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and comment below. Hashtag we are Pravada. Peace.